Hi, I'm James Gardner. And I'm Erin Driscoll. And both of us had the opportunity to work with George a few different times during our career. Um, I worked with him on a Candor and Ebb cabaret at Signature Theater, and we both had the opportunity to work with him on Till the Clouds Roll By, a musical at Roundhouse. Mm -hmm. And even though I never got to do a full show with George, I knew every time I walked in an audition room and he was playing that I knew I was in good hands. And my favorite George story, actually, was when I did that Candor and Ebb cabaret. And anybody that's ever done a cabaret at Signature Theater knows that it's a lot of work in a short amount of time. And um, I think all of us were really nervous about that performance. And I remember at the end of the evening, we took I took my bow and I turned upstage to where George was seated at the piano. And he looks at me with this big grin on his face and his big bright eyes and he just goes, we did it. <laughs> and uh, that's always what I think of when I think of George. That's just the essence of George. And I think that we were so lucky as a community to have him. I first met George when I was a student at Catholic University. He was brought in my junior year to lead and direct our CUA Singers group and he was amazing and I just remember thinking after we worked together for that year that he was something special. Fast forward to years later where we would occasionally cross paths, uh, where he would invite me to sing at his church or other theatrical experiences throughout the course of our working career that we would find ourselves working together in the same room. But the most memorable would be the last time I worked with George which was for Oklahoma now, Oklahoma was a surprise that I definitely didn't expect, but it was terrifying because I was coming in late into the rehearsal process, and I remember walking in and knowing that I was safe and in good hands because George was the music director. He guided me, he was supportive, he was always there with a positive word, and I knew that if I needed any help, that he would be there if I needed. Um, and he was remarkable. He had passion, he had grace, he had wonderful faith, and he always, always had that mischievous smile that I'll miss. I'll miss that smile, that energy that he had with everything that he did. I will forever miss George, but I will also be forever grateful for everything that he taught me and the love and support that I always felt for him. He will be missed. I will miss him. He was a light in this world, a light that is definitely living on in all of us that had the privilege and the joy of knowing him. God bless you, George. You will be missed. Love you. Bye-bye. This is really hard for me because I loved George. I loved him like a brother. I, he was a mentor. He was a talented, talented collaborator. The first show that I did when I got back in town and my mom was, uh, was very sick and um, I was not going to do theater anymore and I managed to get a job at Studio Theater and uh, the show was a class act and George was the music director and I got so excited because I had not really been around a music director that was quite like him. Uh, the way he dealt with the lyrics, um, the way he dealt with actors, the way he uh, dealt with the directors, the way he made the music live. And uh, he did so many wonderful things. He's one of the reasons that I'm still in this community and he's part of the reason that I have had this much success here. I will miss you, George. I will miss everything about you. I miss your talent. I miss your teaching ability. I miss you in the pit. I love you. Otis, my heart goes out to you. It's a huge loss for Washington, D.C. Nights are long since you went away. I think about you all through the day, my buddy, my buddy, nobody quite so true. I miss your voice, the touch of your hand, 
I long to know that you understand, my buddy, my buddy, your buddy misses you. George, 25 years in my life, 25 years as a friend, as a collaborator, as a teacher, as a master of music who was willing to be a student under me, as a man who shaped my students for next to nothing, who gave of himself so selflessly, for a friend who helped me as a human being, helped me as a gay man come out in a more complete and rich way, who made me love the art, who made me proud to be an artist, with whom I shared laughs and tears and deep discussions about music and life and love. I just say thank you. As long as this heart beats, you're alive in me and all those of us who love you. Love you, George. Just wanted to uh, share a few thoughts on the passing of George Fulanidi Shikar. I uh, considered him a very close friend. First met George in 1988 when uh, Joan and I moved to this area from Los Angeles via New York. Uh, the first uh, job that I got here in DC was at the Harlequin Dinner Theater in The Sound of Music, and George was our musical director. And uh, I uh, enjoyed his company from the very beginning. Not only was he a great artist and musician, but also a wonderful human being and uh, a very good friend, and he will be missed. We worked not only at the Holiday together, but we worked also many times at uh, Arena Stage doing musicals together. We worked up at Center Stage in Baltimore together and uh, many times at Ford's Theater. Um, particularly, I will remember his work uh, during 1776 there. It was really a, a wonderful experience. George will be missed. I feel grateful for the time that we did have together and uh, I hope that he rests in peace and is uh, conducting a choir somewhere up there. God bless you, George. So one of my very first professional theater experiences was Custer the Dragon at the Kennedy Center, directed by the brilliant Mary Hall Surface and music directed by George. And I remember being very nervous because I was very young and I was auditioning at the Kennedy Center and auditioning for these talented theater artists that I already knew so much about. And I sang a song from the show at the callback process. And I remember when I finally finished, George let out this brilliantly loud, organic mm -hmm. guffaw of laughter. That laugh that we all know and mm -hmm. love so well, accompanied by his brilliant smile, and immediately set all of my anxieties and tensions at ease. And that was George's greatest gift. Beyond his brilliant musicianship and his talent was his ability to set a room at ease, to set people at ease, and to let you know that not only were you creating great art, but you were making great relationships and having great work experiences at the same time. I don't remember meeting George. I feel like he's just always been there in town. He was just always there, smiling and laughing, and I'm gonna miss him a lot. We will miss George very, very much, but we will always carry with us the memory of not just the art we created with him, but the loving, joyful experiences of being his friend and being his collaborator. Thank you. Ah, George, I can't believe I'm actually doing this because that means you're no longer here. But I do want to take a moment to recognize the musical director that you were, the kind, wonderful human being that you were. George was the very first musical director I had the opportunity to work with in the DC area. We worked at the Shakespeare Theater, we worked at Arena, we worked at Vulture Theater, and a variety of other places, including the Kennedy Center. He had a passion 
for music. It wasn't just playing what was on the page. George took huge interests in all the performers that he worked with, trying to empower them with the gift that was on the page to their performance. You could sit and watch him in the pit every single night, smiling, singing along. He was just that kind of a person. It was always about somebody else, never about George. Always about the production, never about George. <laughs> and when I think of him, he really was the very first health kind of person that uh, I met here. Equal portions of everything. Uh, again, the uniqueness of George. He was kind, he was considerate, he listened, we argued passionately over our business. That's what we were meant to do. But most importantly, he leaves behind a legacy. And if you never had the chance to work with him, it's unfortunate because he had a gift, a gift for music, a gift for love, a gift for passion, a gift for life. Rest well, my dear friend, I will miss you. I knew George long before I actually worked with him. Uh, I feel like that wasn't terribly unusual. I feel like pretty much everybody knew George. Um, and I have very strong recollections of not just the conversations we'd have passing in the hallway, but, um, but when I would go see a show that he conducted, I often spent quite a lot of time with my neck craned around watching the monitor on the balcony um, so that I could watch George at work. Um, I even watched him conduct his way out of several potential disasters, which um, was a delight from a rather strange perspective in the audience. Um, I finally did get to work with him very late in his career. Uh, I assisted him on The Little Mermaid at Imagination Stage. It was at the point where he needed somebody to play the piano for him, so I did that. Um, the astonishing was, like, thing was that I got to see his creative process at work um, and watch him make all these astonishing creative decisions. Um, he was always kind and soft-spoken and gentle in rehearsals, but the wonderful part was that counterbalancing that was this razor-sharp musical discernment and acumen um, what was going to work, what was not going to work, how you could massage the latter to make it become one of the former, um, trying to deal with a tricky lyric or a vocally demanding uh, technical challenge um, and just turning them into these wonderful, actable, playable moments. Um, it was a fantastic journey just being in the room with him and uh, we're going to miss you, George. One of the most disappointing things about being a music director in this area is that you don't get to work with the other music directors that often. Usually a show will hire one of you and that's all. And um, that's all that's needed. So I rarely get to, get to work with some of the uh, great music directors in the area, but George is actually one that I've had the good fortune to work with. Uh, early in my career, I did... I was his assistant on your good man, Charlie Brown, at the old roundhouse on Bushy Drive, the old, old one. And then um, uh, he music directed a show I wrote for the opening of the Atlas Theater down in D.C., and he just did such a nice job with that. And then more recently, uh, he's been our contractor at Ford's and actually uh, played uh, some of the shows I did there. Um, so it's just been great to see him over the decades. And... The amount I've learned from this gentle, kind, warm man, uh, the things I've learned from him, the things that I've learned from not just how he's worked with music, but how he works with other people. You know, I said on Facebook that he lit up every room that he walked into with his engaging spirit. And it's so sad that he's gone, uh, not just for him and his wonderful family, but also for uh, for us, uh, especially during this uh, pandemic when we're trying to figure out the very essence of what theater is. And um, uh, 
to not have him uh, because he was the spirit of DC theater and a little bit of our soul is gone with him. And so I'm going to miss him terribly and hopefully hold true to the things they taught me. And, you know, as I said to a bunch of people, like, if there's someone out there who had a mean or bad thing to say about George, I never met that person. Um, he's just so warm and wonderful and caring and took the time and patient. And um, we all could learn a lot from him. And hopefully we will and and hold him in our hearts uh, so that we remember him always. Anyway, best, wish, best wishes to George's family, to Otis, and to all the people who worked with him and... Uh, hopefully the theater community will continue to hold him in their hearts. The first time I met George was when I was called in to play for one of his classes at Studio Theater. I was just a random name on the list of pianists in the DC area at the time. But that first class led to another and another. And then George would eventually call me in to help out with some other projects. That eventually led to him asking me to be his associate and assistant at Arena Stage, as well as the Shakespeare Theater. Even after I moved to New York, he would always call me up. He would check in to see if I was interested in working on a show with him. And if the timing worked out, I would, I would do so gladly. It was another chance to work with George, to work with my friend. The last time I saw George, it was a Valentine's Day. He was in assisted living at that time, but he was doing well. And because it was Valentine's Day, the place was decorated. There were heart decorations and there was cake. We had cake together. As I was leaving, it hit me that we had known each other almost 30 years. That first class at Studio Theater was in the early 90s if not 1990 or 88 or 89. I mentioned that to George, 30 years. He looked at me and he just sighed happily, but 30 years. Thank you, George, for being such an incredible part of my life, for being a mentor, for opening so many doors for me for inspiring me, for being a fellow foodie, but most of all for your friendship and your trust. You are missed, you are loved, but I also know you are already probably somewhere already gathering a group of people getting ready to, together to sing. And you are looking over all of us, making sure that we are all still staying on the beat. Hi, I'm Joy Zinnemann, uh, the founding artistic director of the Studio Theater and currently the director of the Studio Acting Conservatory in Washington, D.C. I knew and have worked with George for 25 or 30 years, worked with him as a music director at the Studio Theater. Uh, most memorably, he did Class Act and Gray Gardens as music director. But I wanted to speak about him today as a teacher. He started the musical theater program at the Studio Acting Conservatory 25 years ago. He trained hundreds of students who could or could not sing. He developed a loyal coterie. Some people came back only to take his class. Uh, they no longer studied at the conservatory, but they continued to come back year after year just to study with George. Why is that? He incorporated a feedback protocol for students and the audience in final scene. He helped by instituting scheduling in his classes that was used by all the other teachers in the conservatory. He was a favorite of students and teachers, expanding not only their expressive range, but their confidence in using their voices to say something today. 
Mostly, he was a kindly taskmaster, willing to use his immense natural talent in the service of his students and of others. We, all the teachers at the Studio Acting Conservatory, miss George every day. Hi, I'm Buzz Morrow. And I'm Deb Gottesman. And we are the directors of the Theater Lab School of the Dramatic Arts. And we're here to celebrate George as a teacher. I, I did work with him a lot when he was my musical director. And anybody who's had that pleasure knows that George was just one of the best and one of the nicest people you could ever work with. But also he's just a fantastic teacher and somebody that we worked with in that capacity for many years. And he, he changed the lives of many students. He came to us in, I think it was 2004, uh, to say that with the cabaret network, he wanted to teach a cabaret class. Uh, and he did, and he always did it with a partner. He did it with Wendy Lane Bailey and Judy Simmons and Steve Cupo, and uh, always with our, a great partner, but George was the constant through all of it. And we had many, many devoted students. One of them, I think, took it five or maybe six times. And that was uh, Mary Ann Glass Miller. And she actually has since taken on the mantle. And she now teaches it with Jeff Hamlin in George's memory and in George's style and as a tribute to all of the great teaching that George did for us. So we were just so grateful to have George on our faculty. And we're so grateful that that class continues to be taught in his memory. The thing about George as a teacher, I think for me, is how he always managed to make every student believe that they had limitless potential. And that was true for total beginners and the many, many working professionals that he also taught. And I feel that George really trained his students not just to be good performers, but to be really good artists who shared his generosity of spirit. So George, we are forever grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you, George. I met George in 2002, and it was in the Theater Lab cabaret class entitled getting your act together and putting it on the stage, a cabaret workshop. I was excited. Um, I came from a musical theater background and um, I knew I loved some cabaret singers, but I really didn't know what cabaret was all about and how it was different from theater. And so I signed up for the class, uh, fall 2002. George was teaching um, with Wendy Lane Bailey, who started the DC Cabaret Network. And it was just fantastic. We worked on everything from what cabaret is, what it isn't, um, how to choose a song, um, how to be yourself, <laughs> which was the greatest challenge of one's life, I would suppose, but a huge challenge in that class because cabaret is it's being yourself on purpose. Um, we learned about uh, what goes into a cabaret show, although pretty much none of us in that class was ready for a full length cabaret show, but it was fantastic. And it just ignited my, my interest in this, which is now nearly 20 years later, um, still going strong. Um, George directed my first one woman cabaret show called So Far at Capitol Hill Arts Workshop. And um, George inspired me so much in the process of becoming myself, not only for the sake of cabaret, but you know, for the sake of life. Um, and now I am teaching the cabaret workshop at the Theater Lab um, and taking so much of what he taught me and, and bringing other information and influences with it. And um, I am so proud to teach that class and continue teaching it 
uh, in George's spirit and with, I hope, the generosity, uh, good humor, uh, and love that he put into that class. He was an amazing human being. He was so tender and so open-hearted and um, just a love. I miss you, George, and I love you. And I know wherever you are right now, there is wonderful music playing and there's some very happy singers. Love you. Hi, Kim Scharnberg here. I am an orchestrator and arranger, and I do a lot of work with Ford's Theater, which is where I got to work with our good friend George for very many years. And his sense of humor and his way in taking care of musicians, taking care of any situation that would come up, uh, was always appreciated. And Last time I saw George, uh, we had a wonderful meal together where we were talking about where in the world we would want to spend the rest of our lives. So uh, it was a wonderful meal and he's going to be greatly missed. So thanks. I'm thinking so much of George right now and sending so much love to his family, friends, and especially to you, Otis. George and I had a great collaboration. He was my first musical director at Arena Stage. George was smart, creative, really fun. And one of the most wonderful things about George is his ability to always try anything new that you wanted to try within the orchestration. Because sometimes musical directors tend to be a little bit narrow in their thinking. George never was. Like for example, when I really wanted a string band for Oklahoma and George basically reorchestrated the whole show in order to do that uh, with spectacular results. He also was as wonderful with actors as he was with everybody else. He was open to them. Uh, he would help change keys for them. He understood their vulnerabilities and he understood their love for musical theater. I really miss you, George. You were a wonderful collaborator and a great and dear friend. I've had the good fortune to know George for the better part of 30 years. I had the opportunity to be in the room with George for a handful of projects. The fact that his dance card was always full was a testament to his ability. And the truth of his ability was found in the rehearsal room and on stage. So working on those projects was joy. He brought an immense talent, great energy, and an unyielding love for the work, for the process, and for his fellow artists to every pre-production meeting, every rehearsal and performance. And I, I never knew him to be dismissive or unkind to anyone in the room. He infected us with his love and respect for the work. Though the demand was clear, this should be a terrific theater experience, so of course it will be. He achieved that end through a, an uncanny and unflagging ability to work with his fellow artists. It was heartbreaking to hear about George's death. Heartbreaking for sure, for the DC theater community has lost a treasured artist. Hello, my friends. This is Michael Bobbitt coming to you all the way from Cambridge, Massachusetts. I miss all my DC friends and I particularly miss my friend George Fujinidi Shikar. Um, when I came back to DC in 1996, I somehow ended up being coached by George for um, auditions. And at that um, coaching session, George invited me to um, audition for a production of Animal Crackers that he was music directing at um, at Arena Stage and somehow I got the gig 
and that began that be, that became the beginning of a very 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 long relationship with George. Uh, George, this this fantastic and exacting music director, that demanded what he demanded, but always got the best out of people. I was able to be in a room with him as an actor, as a choreographer, many many times, as a producer, as a playwright, and every single time I just learned so much from him. So much about how to mix playing with technique so that you have these polished performances. And I, t I take that with me today. And he has had a, he's been a big part of my life and, I, and a big part of my artistry. I think I was trying to count the other day and I think it's, it was like 25 shows we've worked on together. And I cherish every single moment of it. I will miss you very, very much, George. And I hope that you are being an exacting music director as you're up there, getting the chorus of angels to sing and dance in, in, in your praise and honor. Um, rest in peace, my friend. George Fulgenetti Shakar was a remarkable musician and music director who contributed so much to Washington theaters over the last three decades, over more than three decades. He not only was a great music director, but he was also a genuinely nice guy. He generously gave of his talent to performers on stage and everyone off stage as well. During um, our first season at Metro Stage in 1987, he music directed the uh, musical The Fantastics at um, our old theater in our converted storefront with 65 seats. We were then American Showcase Theater. He, um, in the cast, we had an Algayo who was an international opera singer. We also, in the, included in the great cast, was Ugo Madrano in his first English-speaking role. In his playbill bio, it listed him as music director, conductor, singer, bassist, pianist, and tap dancer. Tap dancer. Who knew? Who knew George was a tap dancer? Um, anyway, George graduated to far bigger stages over the decades, but he returned to Metro Stage in 1998 when, he was when we were performing cabarets while we were waiting for a new theater to be built. The cabaret was um, decad called Decadence, Desire, and Destiny, cab celebrating cabaret in the German tradition with three very talented singers. It was a privilege to work with George, to know George, to have him work with us at Metro Stage. We will all miss him, and I just wish I had seen him tap dance. We love you, George. Hey, my name is Ben Boker. I'm a woodwind player here in town, and I think I first met George on the 2012 Ford's Theater Gala, and I was immediately taken by how kind and gentle he was and how easy he was to work with. And he was a great talent at keyboards and really had superb people skills and resultantly was just such a great music director and contractor. Um, I most recently saw him on, we were doing the uh, 2018 Ford's production of The Wiz, and um, which he contracted me to play on. And I just can't say enough how much I'm going to miss working with him and seeing him. George Fulginini Shocker was a fabulous music director, conductor, and pianist. During the 2010 and 2011 runs of Oklahoma at Arena Stage, we totaled over 160 performances. And they were all fun and great musical times because of George. He had the skills to create at the keyboard, lead orchestra, accompany singers and dancers, and craft through his sense of fun, a space where really wonderful shows could happen and with everybody happy to be giving 100% every time. George had a lovely sense of humor and a great laugh. You knew the opportunity to create beautiful things was huge because of the energy he infused in each performance. He's a truly gifted man, great friend, and a huge part of the Washington DC musical scene. We all miss you, George.
This is a memory of our friend George. In 2003, uh, we were playing cabaret at Arena Stage, and George was the music director and piano player. Uh, as part of the gig, we were told that we would be wearing dresses. Uh, not necessarily that we would be in drag, but we would be men having to wear dresses to be employed by the Kit Kat Club. George was a little bit nervous about how the band would respond to uh, him, in particular, being the music director and the gay guy in a dressing room with straight guys wearing dresses. Um, it ended up not being a problem. Uh, guys were actually getting into uh, complimenting one another and how well they looked in their respective outfits. And George, of course, with his uh, little sense of humor, was really tickled by the whole thing and uh, very appreciative of how well everybody got along. So we will miss him dearly uh, as a musician and as a guy who was just delightful to be around. To my friend George Foganiti Shakar, my friend and musical collaborator for over a decade, gregarious, ebullient, optimistic, reliable, good-tempered, efficacious, empathetic. These are just a few of the words that describe you. You were gregarious because when I finally came to town in 2007 and began working, you were the name that everyone talked about, so I knew I had to meet you. Everyone knew and loved you in the DC community. When I finally did meet you, I could see why everyone loved you because you were easy to get along with, sociable and could work with anyone, getting the best from the artists you collaborated with. No matter what was happening, you were always ebullient, cheerful, and full of energy. Your conducting and leadership demonstrated an effortless way of communicating this and that it was full of joy and life and wonderfully captured the spirit of the piece you were performing. You were also optimistic and reliable, finding ways to see the good and the positive in every situation and showing that you were dependable. George, you were good humored. Actually, you were hilarious. I'll always remember you conducting two gentlemen of Verona in a silly French beret and exuding pure joy from the podium. You were also efficacious, finding creative solutions and the means to get things done. I remember when you contracted Come From Away, and despite the difficulties in securing very specific and unique instrumentation, you found ways to get what you needed to get the artists to bring that work to life. Finally, my friend, you were empathetic. Spending time with you was pure joy. Did I mention joy? I was spending time with a gentle, kind soul, full of love for all of humankind. I am so grateful to have known and worked with you. Gregarious, ebullient, optimistic, reliable, good-tempered, efficacious, empathetic George. May you rest in perpetual love and light. Your spirit will live on, my friend.